All right, what is up guys today? This is gonna be a really, really cool restoration because this is actually my buddy Greg's base. Um, and he actually, if you could probably remember, the last restoration I did was a base he gave me um, for a very, very cheap price and I totally restored it, made it awesome. Uh, and this is his base that he like grew up playing with. So you can see the metal, a lot of it is like patinaed and it just needs to be polished up, cleaned up with some vinegar and stuff like that. Um, but then there is also, you know, a couple cracks and dings that we we're gonna fix along the way. Um, here, down here on the pick guard, we're going to use a heat gun to warp that back. And then we're going to hydro dip it and everything. But we're going to full set up, polish everything, make it look real good. Clean up all the rust off these pickups. Uh, we'll replace all these screws. We'll put brand new ones on there. Um, yeah, but it should be should be fun. So follow along. We're going to do the time lapse while I narrate over it. Crack a beer and let's have some fun. All right, first things first, we're gonna have to take off these green strings. I like them, but we're gonna have to take them off. And um, then it's just all your standard assembly, a lot of taking off screws. Most of these screws I will be replacing, so that's why I use the power tool, because if I strip them, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna throw most of the screws away. We got spare, kick our screws. I'm gonna put new um, strap lock on, strap locks on, all that stuff. The pickup screws were a little pain to get off, but we're replacing those too, they were quite strict. Um, these were all actually pretty good. I just had to clean up the patina and rust on them. So with all these little tuner screws, um, we are going to restore these ones. As well as the tuners uh, and the bridge cover, the bridge, and the bridge screws. So we're going to keep all those. And we're just going to do a vinegar soak on those um, for 48 hours. And that should take most of the patina and rust off. And the rest we can just polish off if we need to. And from there, the neck on here. Um, it was like in really good shape as far as how it was, uh, the straightness. I mean, just overall the wood wasn't in bad shape or anything, but the frets were extremely tarnished. Um, I ended up having to hit it with never dull probably like four or five times. Normally it's like one or two and it's no problem. Um, and after hitting it several times with never dull, uh, as you can see here, I get out um, the fret erasers too because there was a tiny bit of rust on some of them and some stains and that's what I'm doing there, the fret eraser. Um, and then after the fret eraser, I'm going back over everything again with never dull. Uh, then I use the Ernie Ball um, wood treatment for the rosewood. Just keep it nice and protected, nice all that. Now for the sanding, I like to get a head start with an orbital sander. I don't put too nuts with it. Um, I just get, you know, all the, everything hazy. Um, you know, nice and cloudy. I don't really strip it to bare wood or anything. And then I like to do the rest by hand. So that way there's less room for air. You know, it's a little more hard work, but you're not going to mess up somebody else's guitar as easy. So after that, we got it primed with white. And Greg decided to do, you know, kind of similar colors. I kind of was, you know, pushing him on this too. I thought it would be cool to do it. Same kind of colors it was, the red and white. And we were going to put, a, there is some metallic red in there as well, but the metallic red, the marble magic, uh, the magic marble paint, it, it didn't, I don't know, it just kind of got like bad and it, it kind of clumped up a little bit in the container. So I ended up not using much of it and mostly just doing red and white, which I originally thought would look really cool anyways. I mean, I think it did look really, really cool. Uh, so here is the body. And then next down, we'll do the headstock here. So the same thing with the headstock. I did tape off the sides. I taped off the fretboard. I'm um, just unnecessary longness to the video, so I should include it. It wasn't too, <laughs> it wasn't too interesting. Um, but as you can see here, I'm really happy with how the headstock comes up. Wait till I take all the masking off and everything. And give it a nice clear coat. Now all this stuff I do like a whole can of rustoleum clear. I don't show that on camera. Um, and I use rust oleum paint for the primer, and I use magic marble paint for the hydro dipping. If you were wondering on what materials I'm using, I usually try to put everything in the description, but you know, in case you were just wondering, you can want to go in the description. That's what I use. Um, now here is the pick guard. This is just this like foam thing I got that I don't know. It's like the perfect size for a pick guard. A pick guard barely fits in there. Um, and I don't have to use too much paint. You don't want to use too big of a container when you use something small, because uh, this paint is kind of expensive. Now, once we got, um, I decided to, I want to upgrade to both CTS pots, um, but unfortunately the volume pot, the, the cavity wasn't big enough to hold the larger pot. So I ended up using the stock one. I just cleaned it really good. As you can see, I shielded all the electronics on both sides, the cavity and the pick guard. Um, and we ended up cleaning up the regular pickups with some sandpaper and vinegar um, and 
that's all just regular factory parts. Now the bridge, I made sure to polish that up really good, even though we're gonna put that bridge cover on there because it was tarnished and I don't want that to all come back, so I want to get a lot of, a lot of polish on there. Um, now, the neck on this uh, has an amazing fit. I was like, without the screws even, it held in there really tight. So very impressive with the construction of this wire. Uh, as you can see, I replaced the strap locks with just some brand new ones. They're basically the same as the factory style though. Uh, and here, after cleaning up these, I was able to get these screws back in. They weren't stripped too bad. I had a nice quality screwdriver and uh, it all went in pretty, pretty good. Um, lastly, we're just going to string it back up with these same green strings. I always put brand new strings whenever I do something like this, but he wanted these green strings and they do look so cool. Where I was like, and they weren't in that bad of shape. Like, you know, they still had some life left to them. So, do definitely think the green strings are a really good touch. Um, here is just some close ups before I put the bridge cover back on. And you'll see in the final video when Greg gets the reveal coming up here in a second. I might have the bridge cover back on, but I, I think it'll look really cool without it. So I wanted to have it without it too for a minute. Um, the design in the back, too, also very, very impressed with. Yeah, this one, I'm just happy that we're going to a, you know, somebody that, that likes to play and you're really going to enjoy it. I think mean, this is just going to. That'd <laughs> be freaking awesome. So let's see his reaction. There's a man. All right. Your old bass ain't so old anymore. Oh, man. Wow. Look at this. Oh, man, dude. <laughs> Holy smokes. Thank you. Hell yeah, right? It turned out pretty good. Oh, wow. Look at that puppy shine. <laughs> it doesn't look like this in... Oh, long time. Now let's plug her in. Hell yeah.